Welcome back to Wrestling Life. <laughs> and we're here with Christy Schultz. Um, thank you so much for uh, for just steak. Rare. Yeah. Um, what you call it? Uh, thank you so much, Christy. I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, can we start first by explaining to everyone how we got in touch with one another? Can we... Do you remember? Do you remember the first, I, I the very yeah. first email that you sent me? You know what? I can't even remember. <laughs> it was awesome. Okay, let me let me set the tone first of all. Okay, okay. my wife is a very strong oh, yeah. woman. Oh, yeah. yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> now my wife is a very strong-willed person, and she and I were darn near asleep one night uh, on the East Coast, and it was probably about eleven thirty at night. And I get a text message, and all it says is Christy, okay? Because I guess your your name didn't fit on the the screen, and mm-hmm. it said, "Can I call you?" And I was like, "Um, <laughs> um." I'm like, "She's like, who's Christy?" I'm like, "I don't know, man. I don't know. I swear to God, I don't know." And I'm like, "I'm sleeping in the house." You're a pansy. What's that? You're a, pan- you're a pansy. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I, yeah, all right. I, I do, dude. I totally skirt out in, in, in front of my wife. No doubt about it. She definitely wears the pants yeah. in the family. As a well, matter of fact, smart, you're smart. Yeah, well, you're I'm very trying, smart. man. I'm trying. I, I'm learning. That's for sure. Um, but she, uh, she, was, she was less than happy that I. <laughs> and then she, she looked at your profile and realized that you were a world medalist or a, a world place winner, and and. Uh, she realized that you were part of the wrestling game and she kind of was, you know, very happy with, with everything after that, but I'm sure she wasn't all that polite at first. Um, so you got a hold of me and we kind of started emailing each other back and forth after that. And through a few emails, I kind of said to myself, Holy cow, this girl has a story to tell, you know, at first, you know, I, I see the name and I think of, Mark and Dave Schultz and all the uh, the accolades that they have and all that kind of stuff. But there seems to be a story that's not told, a story behind the story that, you know, might be the, the uglier side of things and, and might be something that people might not want to hear or might, I don't know, might be scared to listen to. Um how did how did you start wrestling? Well, it's it's actually a pretty interesting story because it starts with with sports in general. Let me say that. that. And did you, um, did you play other sports? I in high school I was a swimmer, hmm. and. Um, as I told you before, um, I was, and nobody is the first time that I've ever mentioned it, and reason being, uh, people don't want to hear it, although everybody ha- every, we all have a story, mm-hmm. but as a uh, child growing up in a violent home, uh, what do you mean by alcoholism, uh, I was severely neglected and abused. Um, I started being left alone when I was probably, my mother had admitted to me that about two years old, I'd be left alone for a couple days at a time. I had no idea how I survived. Um, So you're saying that your mother would leave you by yeah. yourself with no supervision at all, no older brothers and sisters, nothing like just let you fend for yourself. Was she? Was she was an alcoholic. She was an alcoholic. But she was also quite young and quite poor. And she was a single mom at the time. And she was going to college. And I grew up back east. I grew up in uh, Massachusetts. And, Where, and Mass? let's say, Where in Massachusetts? Uh, Northampton, Massachusetts. Oh, okay, cool. All right, yeah. Right by, uh, in fact, she was going to UMass and Smith College, and she was a theater major. So she would go to these cast parties, and they, she would come home for a couple of days. And I can remember, and I don't know what age, but I can remember certain things, uh, 
for example, um, we had a little black and white television set, and um, <clears throat> I remember when Sesame Street would come on, I, I won't have eaten the, the entire time and I'd be hungry and we never had any food and that's quite common. Poverty is rampant in America, but back then they didn't have food stamps the way they had. My mother didn't have a car. She had no way to get to the grocery store. So like once a month, she would go to the welfare office and get a box. They'd give you a box of food. Right. Those who are my generation could can remember this, and they'd give you a big can of meat and this big chunk of fake cheese, and they'd try to put all the calories they could to make sure that you had enough calories. That you basically uh, weren't going to die. I mean, that, that's really – that was it. They were just shoving as much – As many calories as humanly possible so that you don't actually starve. And so many were like we were in that um, – when you're that poor, poverty stricken, um, it, it was all pure fat food. Right. I mean, I remember this can of meat stuff. And I think I told you one time, uh, my mother had put dog food. Did I tell you this? No. My mother put dog food in there, and I didn't realize we were. I, I had been eating dog food, and the only thing that signaled anything was there was a Snoopy. There's a picture of a dog. And I didn't realize it until later on in life. But anyway, when, um, so I didn't know how to eat. And most of the time I was starving because if I couldn't open things, I, I remember not being able to, I'd be up to here on the refrigerator uh, knob. And I wasn't strong enough to open it and, and so forth. So I would be waiting for my mother to come home. Sesame Street came on. And I would watch Sesame Street, and I was not really liked. And then the electric company would come on, right. and I would start getting scared. Because after the electric company came Mr. Rogers. And if, a, if my mother wasn't home by Mr. Rogers, it was starting to get dark. And I wasn't uh, old enough to flip on the light switch, or I mean high enough. So the TV was not only really light. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's unbelievable. So it was just you yeah, from basically as a toddler. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And when did you find sports though? I mean like, like okay, so, so my life was like that until she would have, she, my mother was beautiful and, um, she was very young. She got pregnant when she was, when I, I think she was in high school. And so um, she always had boyfriends, which was a lot of the drama in my life. Here you have the alcoholism for my mother, and they, she had these parties. I would like to say that I'm not saying this to hurt my mom in any way. And uh, we don't speak. We don't have a relationship. I've heard that. I've heard once that she passed on. I've heard once that... Um, she was okay. I don't really know. So you have no idea whether your mother is alive or dead? Uh, no, I don't. And I've heard that she had passed away from um, cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and she smoked quite a bit. But I left home when I was 16. I got a job and started supporting myself. Uh, I went to college and high school, and I had a job. And... Um, but right around that, I went to Oceana High School, mm. and they have uh, they had uh, they had a swim team. That was my only shower. Uh, I was teased. I, I remember I had one shirt, one uh, pair of pants through high school. Through my life, I would get like one outfit a year, and I smelled. Yeah. You know, and I was dirty, and I remember being teased all the time. And so sports, uh, I never felt, I knew it wasn't my fault, and, and throughout this, and we had talked about it's going to, we'd like to talk more, because I have so many stories that are hard to, things come up, and I haven't shared this with anyone. Yeah, but look, first of all, thank you. Okay. <laughs> no, really, I mean... 
Because, like, let's be honest. You could have told this story to Dateline. Yeah, I mean, right. let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but you decide to tell it to some jerk off from Jersey. That, no, that's that, not it. That's well, it. look, it, it is what it is, man. And, and and I appreciate it. But understand that we we got all the time in the world. I mean, as long as you can sit in front of that camera, I'm good. I got nowhere to be. I basically live at this club anyway. So you, right. you take your time. I'm not in any type of hurry at all. So right. this is your, your only shower was at the school. Absolutely. In you fact, didn't, you didn't have a shower at the house. Like meaning we had, well, I, if I woke my mother up from her passing out, I would get a lot of trouble. Um, what does that mean? Uh, well, she would always have boyfriends sleeping over. One time she had a boyfriend for, sh- for maybe, gosh, it was a long time. And he was extremely abusive toward me. Um, and so if I woke up, I mean, I'd get punched in the face or uh, yelled at. And for was, waking them up? Yeah. To get to go to, go to school. And so... Uh, I couldn't take a shower because that would wake him up. But we never had any towels. We didn't have furniture. I slept on the floor. I didn't have a bed until um, until I was in college. They had in the dorm rooms. Oh, I you get know? it. Yeah. Never had a bed. I always slept on the floor. <laughs> That's me. I'm I'm looking to my right, and 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 one of my best friends in the world, uh, Gucci, is sitting next to me. And Gucci's been you know kind of a regular on this podcast, almost like a third mic type of person. And uh-huh. I, I hope it doesn't make you uncomfortable, but... No, it actually gives me a little bit of relief oh, okay. because it gives me a sigh of, okay, I can relax for a minute. Hey! <laughs> um, no, and and here's the thing about it, man. Like, I, you know, we grew up differently. You know, I, I by no stretch of the imagination grew up with a lot of money or anything like that, but I certainly had a bed and three squares, you know, um... And, and and the fact that we we all kind of found this sport and have learned from and through it is pretty amazing to me. I, I'm sorry, I'm going to shut my cake hole right now and let you get back to the fact that you couldn't no, shower it's, anywhere. It's, but it uh, helps you know. me relax because it, it's not that I'm nervous at all. It's just that I don't want to get upset. Yeah, and so. Um, I I've been to several therapists when I started having these panic attacks and and um, just these trauma just out of nowhere and uh, I had started to tell you that every single therapist I have would start crying in every session and these were professionals and I'd be looking at them and be going holy don't crap. you make me cry don't you make me cry. <laughs> So, look, and, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a Jerry Maguire right here, and you ain't gonna make me cry. You ain't gonna make me cry. Uh, I will when I get you into one of my chokeholds. All right, maybe I'll, I'll save I'll that. Take for that. I'll, take that. I'll tap before I cry for sure. Um, but, but go, uh, please, so, so what, what, I thought I was so screwed up because when a counselor tells you a, 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 a psychologist and a, psych, a psychiatrist says that that is in their sixties. And it has heard everything. Says I can't take your case anymore because every time you come in here and I hear your story, I start to cry. The reality is that I was. That this happens. I'm not an enigma. It happens. Nobody talks about it. Nobody shares it. And the only one of the reasons I'm well, the only reason I'm able to talk to you about it is because of um, because you're a wrestler. I don't care about the money. I don't want. I, I, there's no way I could sit down. I know I, I can I can um, talk to Diane Sawyer if I want to. I don't want to. I don't need the money. I I'm poor, but I don't, that's not my ethics. That's there, there's a clear need for someone to stand up for, for wrestling other than the men. Mm. And I don't know if you've read Wade Chalice's um, 
His article, yeah. As soon as he brought uh-huh. my attention, yeah, I, I, I did see it. I did see it. And, and he was saying, where are the women? And I waited because, and we'll talk about my illness later, but I wasn't able to do anything. Mm. And, and because of wrestling, and again, it's easy for me to shift around in circles, but um, I'm here. And I'm not going anywhere. I, I want to go in order. I want to try my best to go in order. And if this takes okay. us till that's what I need you to do. No, no, no. It's fine. Look, look. I, I look. If we if this takes us till till you know August, then I'm okay with that too. Um, but at what point? Look. So you're you're sleeping on floors. You uh, got, sometimes you got, outside. Sometimes on the porch. Why would you sleep on the porch? Because it wasn't allowed in the house. <laughs> You make it sound like that's okay. Like, I mean, you make it sound like that's a common thing. It's not, I mean, Chris, because you when you're growing up, and, and that's, I was so isolated that, how was I going to know that anybody else, I thought everybody looked like that. Really? Yeah. That's unbelievable. Absolutely. I was short of it. Really? So I never questioned did you not, it. Did you not have friends that they would bring you over their house and, and, and they lived so starkly different? you know, so so starkly different to you that you it blew your mind or not until I was in about maybe fifth grade that seemed uh uh You want me to start talking? Because I can start talking now. I can start No one wanted to see my friend. Right. Because because of the way you looked, I I didn't realize then that well, kids were making fun of me all the time because I smelled. I wore the same shirt all the time. I wore the same pants, and at lunch time, everybody was eating lunch, and I just remember being starving and. You know, I was a kid, so maybe I asked if I could finish someone's sandwich. I don't remember. I mean, there's certain things I think you block out. Sure. Sure. Um, but there were times um, right around fifth or sixth grade when I started becoming friends, and it was because, see, now we were always moving because... Okay. You uh, kicked out of places. Our services. Yeah, yeah. That that well, we've seen quite a bit. Sure, you get kicked out of places and Well, not only that, but I'm sure my mother never paid the rent. Right. And but it wasn't just that. There was there was always reports to I, I apparently my mother went to jail a couple times and um and child welfare services have threatened three times that I know my mother went into AA a couple of times and they have this 12 step program. And one of the steps is you have to apologize atone for your sins. Yes. Oh Uh yes. Oh, I've been atoned to many a times. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's what she was doing. And she would come forward with the truth. And apparently I think that made her start drinking again. Because she would admit to these things, and I would just be like, "Well, no wonder." But I was never—I can't remember really being angry at her. And I, for, I'm not—I'm not giving this story because I want revenge or I'm angry. I've forgiven her. I've always forgiven her, and I've always felt like—I've never felt like a victim. Mm. Never felt sorry for myself, and I still don't. Mm. Um, it, 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 I have a very strong spirit, spiritual sense that we all go through trials and that makes you stronger. And because I want, how would I be able to be compassionate to other children that were in need if I didn't go through the, these experiences? I wouldn't. How would I have ever learn how to be brave if I wasn't really terrified? Sure. How would I... How would I learn how to um, to take care of myself and three children in, in in need had I not taken care of myself? 
have, I've, I've got girls at, now that I've got to be careful with what I say, but I love them so much and I take care of, uh, I adopt them like they're my own kids. I, I wouldn't have that. It gives me so much joy. But you do understand that that's not a typical thing either, right? Like you talked about earlier how, you know, there's a, a lot of people that are both abused sexually, both abused mentally and physically, and they're abused throughout their childhood, but as they grow up, the only way that they understand how to do things is to abuse someone else. So you have to understand that you be, being breaking that cycle is not as typical as you might think. Like you, you, you have already understood that it has to be, there has to be a break in that cycle, right? So like, you know, I think just the fact that you kind of understand that is is making the world a better place. I mean, again, I'm, you know, here I am being as grandiose as I can be, but the truth of the matter is you're making the world very, very different just by simply thinking a different way. Would you agree with that? Well, I hope so. I mean, I, I, I certainly, well, I know that I've changed the lives of of the girls, they've changed my life more than I've done for anybody else. I mean, when you give, every you get good coach back. would say that. What I said, every good coach would say that. Go ahead. <laughs> That's true. That's how I know it is. I didn't say it was wrong, but it's true. Yeah, it's hundred yeah. percent true. I feel like I've gotten. I mean, because I've, I've isolated myself, and oh, it, not always. I mean, there was a, a time where I was kind of normal when I was married and when I was having kids and um, when I was wrestling um, and competing. There was there was a time there where I was part of the normal flow right, of life. Yeah, yeah. But um, how did you get into that normal flow of life? Meaning, look, so you had the most horrific, one of the most horrific upbringings that I could think of. I mean, right. I I don't know of anybody that like meaning no one that I could put my hands on and have a conversations with. Well, um, I don't know that maybe you don't know. Maybe they haven't told you. You may, you may be right. You, you may be right. And, and that that's probably truer than I hope, but see, I think I'm, I'm telling what has, what, and maybe you see it as unfortunate. I see it as a gift. For I sure. See, for sure. Every single thing that has happened to me as a gift, as horrible and terrible at the time as it was, it was a gift to me. And I feel so honored that that Heavenly Father chose me as someone who could persevere through this. Mm -hmm. And have I know that a lot of these counselors have told me, you know, you you should be dead. You should be most girls like you are a prostitute. You're, you're a very attractive, you know, and a very attractive young, young girl and then woman. And mm -hmm. uh, how did you, uh, um, why didn't you turn to drugs and why didn't you yeah. turn? To, well, I could have, but there was something inside of me and I, my, uh, my mother and all her boyfriends were agnostic. There was no God to them. Mm. However, I didn't believe that. I just, um, can I tell you a story really quick? Mm -hmm. There was a time uh, when I lived in uh, Massachusetts. And like I said, we moved uh, every couple months to, you know, just from place to place. That's why we had, you know, we never had any belongings or clothes to bring. But there was this one time, and we looked at my, uh, this is one place in particular where I had to sleep on the porch because right. it was only one bedroom, I guess, and it was in the middle of 14 acres, which is real common for me. So there were people around. And my parents, uh, I call them my parents, but when alcoholics get together and they're both angry alcoholics and they're so drunk, they get violent and they yell at each other and um, scream at each other and... 
if if we had been and there were times where we lived uh, close to another house, and we of course get kicked out, and neighbors would complain. Right. However, this one place where we were out on this fourteen acres of land, and and nobody could hear, it. and that's uh, they'd start screaming and and fighting, and I was probably I think I was eleven, ten or eleven at this point, and um, I remember. Uh, uh, this is going to be a little difficult for me to share, but I want to get this point across. It's really important. And that is that, and I can go into more detail at another time, but I would sleep on the porch during the summer and there just wasn't any room. And I didn't even want to be in the house. Everywhere we lived was disgusting. Anyway. Right. But, um, so you would just throw there, like some, like a sleeping bag out on the porch or, uh, Probably like a blanket, yeah, on the porch, and I'd, sometimes I'd, I don't know. My mother made it sound like I was so lucky because I was sleeping under the stars, and, you know, and so I didn't think a whole lot of it. I think I had a stuffed animal, and, well, you were but lucky. Well, during you were lucky. winter, what was that? I said, oh, well, you were lucky then. Hmm. <laughs> Well, it was of a little horse, and I loved horses. So, um, but I remember um, during the winter. And where are you located again? Uh, in central New Jersey. Okay, so you're right here in Massachusetts. It's winter time, and it's freezing cold. Okay. Yeah. And I can't sleep out on the porch, right? So uh, the house apparently was my mother's boyfriend's father that passed away. And um, down in the woodshed, hey, there's a woodshed down there. We'll put Kirsty in there. So I was lucky because they took all the wood out. And um, but downstairs, um, there was this little uh, closet that the food used to be in, if there was food. And um, I used to hide in there after I would was um, assaulted or whatever, and I can't go into more than that right now. But I used to go down there and turn the light off, and I would hide. And I remember this one day in particular, all of a sudden I'm crying, and I'm huddled on my knees, and I feel this bright light. And I hope people don't think I'm crazy by telling you this, but I felt this bright light and it was really warm. And it was like my, and I'm a 10 year old little girl and I kind of lifted in my mind up a little bit and I could see Christy hugged down crying. And it was like these wings wrapped around me. And I felt this incredible, happiness and joy and it felt like there were a bunch of people around me with these wings and I started to feel this lifting of my spirit and I remember feeling so happy and peaceful but yeah there's Christy right here and I'm not insane I'm not a person that's insane I and I knew at the time that I was looking at this little girl, and I knew that I was being protected. And I now I didn't really have a concept of God at this point still, but I felt like there was there was an all omnipresent being, and I can't explain how I thought it these things. Doesn't, it doesn't matter though. I mean, the fact is that you felt something. So right, I mean, and that was a turning point for me because. I can't tell you how many times I was I hid down there in that room, in that dark room, which was next to my my uh, bedroom, which was the woodshed. The woodshed. Let's call it what it is. It was a woodshed. It, it was a woodshed. It was a cement. It, it was freezing. There's no some insulation, and um, they took half of the wood out. And I would wake up with spiders crawling all over me, and I'd get bitten all over the place. It was a horrible place. 
And so sometimes I would go from the woodshed. I wasn't really supposed to come in the house, but um, I would go and I would hide in, in, in that little closet. But the bedroom was upstairs. And so they didn't know, especially because they'd be passed out or whatever. Um, so I just hoped they didn't hear me. Um, but I was left alone quite a bit then, too. Like, like at, 10 or 11? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, from I always was left alone, but it was horrible being in that. I remember just being afraid of wolves coming to get me or because that could have happened. Sure. Um it was that kind of property. It was I mean, really I know no, the, no. The, the migration habits of timber wolves in the Northeast, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that that <laughs> probably is a realistic threat. I don't, I don't really know. I mean, but you know, the, the truth of the matter is that you probably, you know, uh, uh, were in some type of danger. Uh, uh, okay. A lot of danger. <laughs> but, well, but, uh, snakes and stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was scary sleeping on the porch. There's that. And it, I, yeah. Um, so again, you, you started to okay, so, sports, sports, sports. Tell me so that's sports. where my spirituality and that's what kept me kind of what I would say clean as far as I never, I just never, I was terrified of doing drugs. I was terrified. And the difference between me becoming an alcoholic and someone that follows that cycle that you're talking about. Now I drank in college I had my fun, you know, but I, I, I was always very aware that I didn't want to be like that. Right. And I knew in my heart that um, I was going to, it was something that drove me to survive. And that was that I knew that I wanted to have children and, and that I wanted to be married and, and I was going to do everything different. And I was going to find uh, the strongest man in the world. And look who I married. I found him. You know, and uh, I just knew that that was going to happen. And I think that that whole incident in that closet and that spirituality is something that really, uh, and, and it's with me now, no matter what happens, there's that and there's the fact that I will not let my, I always knew when I have children, and I knew I was going to have, if I, if and when that time comes, but I knew it was going to happen. Um, I'm going to love my children. I'm going to do absolutely everything so opposite that it won't even, I'm going to love my kids too much. And my kids will tell you they, that I do. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. Um, and so, uh, that, so that's quite skipping ahead. However, um, I always was running away. <laughs> from what? So I was running from something. Mm -hmm. And so I guess that made me get into some kind of physical shape starting around, you know, gosh, early though. And then you add to that in their food. Well, you know, um, that's going to help a little bit in some aspects. I guess dog food doesn't have that many calories. No, it doesn't. <laughs> No, and certainly um, not the nutritious kind. <laughs> um, I, you know what's disgusting is it tasted exactly like that welfare meat. I couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Um, so you started as a swimmer, though. I mean, but yeah, I and you know why it was because where? The first, by the way, in Massachusetts. No, we moved from. Massachusetts, and my mother was in theater, in the theater department, remember I told you, well, she finally graduated from college, she was on a seven-year plan, and um, her boyfriend, they're both alcoholics, and he would, he's a psychopath, um, though, and she stayed with this guy for uh, quite a lot, probably 25 years, I still know where he is, and as much as I'm a forgiving and loving person, I have always fantasized about going and beating the crap out of him, but it's not worth it. And I think that's one of the things that maybe turned to to wrestling is not so much as a... a I, I did want to learn how to defend myself because there were times throughout as I was growing 
I mean, I was, I knew I was very attractive and um, I was really pretty as a young, like 12, 13 year old. And I looked older because, and I'm not, I feel very free and, and I'm okay to say this. I always had a, a very large chest and um, they're not fake. Okay. <laughs> no. My daughter sometimes, and I have to say that because all of my teammates are like, there's no way that those are real, Christy. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but you're a man. Would you, you keep listen. it on Stop. track, please? <laughs> hey, uh, okay, I'll get back on track. on track, dude. Come record. on. For the record. Okay, so anyway. Um, but, okay, here's hey, that Gucci, track. Gucci just, he said, check. He meant he, one question <laughs> that he had that was answered. <laughs> There you go. All right. So Gucci, go ahead. Give her the check mark. Give her the check mark. All right. There you go. All right. I, I can play the I can play the good guy today. All right. Today. Yeah. Good, good cop, bad cop. I'll play I'll play the good cop hey, tonight. Don't forget your your wife's gonna be watching this. But <laughs> you, you you had you had the scariest look on on your face. My wife, what? Where is she? What? She, okay. I'm scared to death of that woman. I'm not going to lie to you. She I'm, should be. You know, I that's am. I absolutely am. She knows the combination to the gun safe. She, I absolutely <laughs> am. She lets me she, breathe in the morning. There's no hey, question. You know, she is strikingly beautiful. And you have beautiful kids, by the way. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll keep really them. Really beautiful family. Yeah, beautiful. we'll keep them. Um, so, guys, I'm sorry. So, uh... Wrestling. Reason, oh, well, I, forget no, forget about wrestling. I don't even care like so much about wrestling right now. But okay. you started, you, you started to swim, though. I mean, is that well, is that what I mean, got you? That's what started sports. Yeah, and it was because uh, I was a freshman in high school, mm. and um, I see shower. That's the first thing that enters my mind. Now we never had. Um, I remember the only soap we ever had for shampoo it was um, Irish soap I used to use in my hair. But we didn't have towels or anything like that. My, my mother and her boyfriend smoked cigarettes and it smelled so bad. And, and the how, this was in California. And I'll, have to, I'll tell you another time how we got over to California. Well, my mother was, they decided she was going to be an actress in Hollywood. And so um, I. I was shoved in the back of a Toyota truck with the cab over it, oh, with wow. the belongings, and most of it was tent camping gear. And that's how we got across the country from Massachusetts to California. And I was up like this all the way from Massachusetts to California. And the thing was, if I had to go to the bathroom for a first year or anything like that, there was no way. Furthermore, they didn't have any air. To breathe, and if I would occasionally lift up that back part, I don't know if they have those anymore today. But um, you breathe yeah, in the flat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'd be breathing in that carbon dioxide or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, I carbon built, dioxide. Yeah, yeah, but it would make me really sick. Yeah. So I close it and then I fall asleep. Uh, but there was no way because of the the camping gear. It would, um, there was no way for me to knock to say I need to go to the bathroom or anything. So if I had to go, uh, I just had to hold it. I learned how to, to hold it in. Um, and so. Can you teach my wife? Cause I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> uh, she can't hold it more than 30 seconds. I gotta, I, it's hey, amazing to me. After you have kids, I'm telling you, it is hard for a woman. Right, she, she deserves to have the whip. Whatever. I mean, you Whatever. guys have no clue what pain is and you guys are such crybabies. Mm. Oh my gosh, you got a splinter. Mm. Give me a break. Mm. Try out a pass in a water bottle. All okay. right, <laughs> all right. We get it. You were there probably. I was. Um, so anyway, that's how we got to California. And um, so Fresh once high school. we had a, what? Fresh so high school. Uh, actually eighth grade, uh, Eighth grade, you start really. I started to really notice boys. Seventh, seventh and eighth grade, and 
they noticed me and somehow I figure out a way people people never knew. That's when I really started hiding things. Right. Nobody ever knew that because I caught I caught on. This right. isn't normal. Okay, that makes sense. This is right around the time where okay. This is so, not I mean, like like you know, as as a person that was you know, thrown a pretty bad hand in the beginning. You know, it seems as though you kind of caught on and we're kind of understanding, all right, right look, this is what other people do. Right. Okay? This is what is probably accepted as a social norm. Right. This is something that I should start getting used to. Now, did you start buying your own clothes? Did you start buying your own food? Did you start? I got a job when in California law at that time, you had to be 18. So uh, when I was um, my sophomore year, I passed for 18. I tried to get a job when I was 13, and no one would hire me because they said, oh, you're not 18. It's right. the law. Let me see your ID or whatever. But when I was 14, I, I passed, and I, I got hired on at the mall. What, what, what job did you have? Tell me what you did. I was working at the mall. I met Dwight, uh, Dwight, whatever, uh, from the 49ers, and uh, the Joe Montana. Mm -hmm. They came into the toy he's store. Throwing, he's, he's thrown a couple passes before in his life, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I know Steve Young, so okay. he's my buddy. All right. So anyway. So anyway, I was working in a toy store, and so I started buying my own clothes. And um, and some I would eat there, but um, I didn't make that much money. So right, yeah. No, of, uh, you were not rich, but you could certainly afford a meal. Um. Well, I, I wouldn't go that far. Um. Because if if if. I, 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 oh, this is disgusting. I had to pay rent. For what? Uh, to pay the rent. For, I mean, oh, so you paid your I paid mother's rent. rent? My mother actually made me get a job. I, and, and her boyfriend so that they could drink. And, um, so there wasn't money for food. I did pretty much live off of bologna sandwiches for what? From, from what maybe ninth, eighth, and ninth, and tenth, and eleventh grade until I left. Uh, I lived on off bologna sandwiches. I I remember having two bologna sandwiches every night, and I have to wait until they were came home from the bars and were done fighting because it would make me cry and I'd get sick to my stomach. And as soon as they passed out, I'd go downstairs. I'd sneak downstairs and have my two bologna sandwiches. And then I'd go to sleep, and then I'd wake up, and then I'd go. We had swim practice at uh, 7 in the morning. But I was happy to go. And do you know that I never missed school? Really? I couldn't wait to get to school. because, yeah. And that's why I got such good grades. I was always on the honor roll. I graduated sense. early. I got excellent. I was, I was on the honor roll throughout college. I started my own business teaching at the college for the professors um, my freshman year. I was, and it was because, it, and that's, again, it a, was a huge blessing because um, I wouldn't have done that. Maybe, I don't, I can't say I would or I wouldn't have, but that was my, my place of, of ref, refuge was school. It was warm there. Uh, there were actually people that were nice, not not the kids, but the teachers were nice to me. And then once I, as I said, when I started catching on, I, I hid it. Nobody would ever know. Like, people are going to see this from high school and even lower than that. And I, like, I, I've never shared this with anybody. So they're going to be shocked because you wouldn't be able to tell that I, I made sure nobody had even a clue. And you right. couldn't. So, oh. so let me ask you this, right? So, like, let's say you have a friend in high school, right? And um, I know what you're gonna say. I had there was no furniture. My bed at still through high school. I slept on a wooden floor, no bed. I slept in the same sleeping bag for four years, never washed. Um, and I made excuses all the time why people couldn't come to my house. 
it was always an excuse. And I had a boyfriend that was on the wrestling team, which is kind of where the wrestling whole thing got started. But he was the captain of the wrestling team. When I was a, a freshman, he was a senior. And Oceana had an awesome wrestling team. I'm saying this because a lot of my high school friends, um, they wish me happy birthday. And they're like, happy birthday to the most decorated wrestler in Oceana history. I mean, I just love wrestlers. They're just awesome. But... Um, <clears throat> they were an awesome team and I had a boyfriend and uh, I also had a best friend. My best friend didn't even know why we never went to her house. I just kept saying the excuse, oh, it's really boring at my house. You don't want to go there. And if I ever did get a ride home, which I never asked for a ride home because I lived in a very poverty stricken neighborhood and so i always lied about where i lived so you and would get dropped off or like like a couple miles I'd away away i'd walk home it would take me about i don't know a half hour to walk home but it was worth it because i would lie about where i lived but i took the bus everywhere at that point um in california the bus system took you everywhere right um, so i was able to avoid it and um when I got my boyfriend, um, I made excuses and lied about why he couldn't come to my house. Nobody ever came to my house, ever. And there was no way I would ever let anybody there. It was just it was humiliating. Because at this point, I had been into, you know, I was hanging out with friends. Right. They had normal homes. Oh, social, yeah, right. Still never felt bad for myself. No. I didn't. For any, not by any means. I just knew that, okay, I'm, this is, my life is way off. Yeah. And I'm, and then I would get angry. I started to get a little, I, I'd get angry that my life was the way it was. However, I was too afraid to be angry, if that makes sense. You mean, because, you, you mean too afraid to show your anger? Definitely. And I could never express, there were a couple times where I tried to, and this, at this point, when I was in 10th grade, this is when I was 9th grade and 10th grade, my mother's boyfriend used to come up into my bedroom and sit on my legs and talk about sex and I was molested and blah, 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 blah. It was a really bad time in my life. And so um, it, this was not a place that I wanted to go. It was not. I, I, what wasn't a place you wanted to go? Home. Mm-hmm. Right, so so you kind of threw like like a, the way a, a person throws themselves into work, you threw yourself into schoolwork and sports. Started first, um, and then when I was able to, and when he, I was never able to join it, I wanted to so badly join sports, but I couldn't afford it. And I feel you know you got to have rides from your parents, and I. And plus, we were moving every three months or whatever up until ninth grade when I started paying rent. And that was sort of a threat. If you can't pay rent, I'm not going to be able to stay here. And I wanted to stay there because I started to make friends. Because at that point, I was able to um, to afford some clothing and what have you. And then once I joined the swim team, that became, <clears throat> it wasn't nearly, for me anyway, wasn't nearly like wrestling became for me as far as family and the trust and the relationships you build. And I think as, as wrestlers, um, see now I swam, like I said, for, to get clean and the shower that I actually joined because it was the cheapest sport. All you needed was a bathing suit. Yeah. 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 Um, but, at some point, I hadn't been working. I hadn't worked yet because swim started right. At you the said, end. well, first of all, you say that matter of factly, but that's you. You know, I mean, that's not the way that most people choose the sport they're going to participate in. <laughs> like you, you got to understand that, that. Hey, man, I mean, it's a swimsuit. We cool. All right, we cool. All right, so, so I mean, you got to understand. You say that kind of matter of factly, and holy shit, like you know, that's not really. The shower, and then I would always, uh, I kind of feel bad about this, but I would steal some, some of the girls' shampoo. Why and, don't you feel bad about that? You didn't have shampoo. 
I'm sure if you just asked, you know. <laughs> no, girls wanted to share the freaking shampoo. Really? Man, I would always say I forgot it at home and they wouldn't share it. So I'd steal it when they were leave. You know, I just squeeze a little in my hand. And I, I'm sorry. I do that to Gucci all the time, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, now, you know, I wouldn't have any problem. Hey, he doesn't have any hair. You guys don't need shampoo, really. You make no, I know point. you do. Okay, you have all the, all right, you, you made your point. It's you got the hair there. <laughs> it's glistening. So, uh, um, so go ahead. I'm sorry. So you, you, did you excel as a swimmer? Like, I mean, were you, were you? I was really good because, um, <laughs> there were college coaches. Yeah. Okay. And I told you I had big breasts. They always made you swim the backstroke, backstroke. Oh, dude, really? <laughs> <laughs> and so I became such a good backstroker. <laughs> That's creepy, man. Like you were a kid. No, well, I, I don't know. So you got to laugh. And it was yes, not. man, that's creepy, dude. I mean, you were a kid. Oh, mm. they didn't see it. That, well, they were only they were only college. I guess, man. Still, yeah, go ahead. You know. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, so you you did real well at the backstroke. In the backstroke, and um, so I I I did well in that, and I, it felt really good to win when I you know. And here was a sport that I didn't even really like. I hated swimming. I, I won't go in the pool anymore. I, if I go in the pool, really? I will not swim a lap. In fact, I, for scholarship money, I did swim on the college team too. And where did if you go to school? Ever, where did you go? To, where did I, went you go? To, I went to school at Southern Oregon University, uh. and um, I love that school. And um, so, but I mean, we're talking. We we did. Pretty much, the thing that sucks about swimming is you do basically 200 laps every day within a two-hour period, and they just break it up, you know, like four laps is a 100-yard distance. And they'll say, okay, you're going to do six 400s. And basically, they might as well just say, hey, swim 200 laps as fast as you can and take a shower. Yeah, they might realize it, but it's so boring. Yeah. But anyway, so I didn't have a passion for, for swimming at all. But um, now wrestling, and here's here's something. Well, how else. did you get into wrestling then? I mean, like, I mean, I know you were you you were dating the the captain of the wrestling team, right? And I I felt this. Now here's the interesting thing: is I could have gone out for the wrestling team had I wanted to. It, but, in high school, meaning yeah. meaning they were. <laughs> Like, yeah, that, okay, so what years were you in high school? Um, I, 80... It was, I, I, I don't want to eat. Most, most men have to buy me dinner for that. Dude, answer. stop. Come on. You're, you're a wrestler. You're fine. <laughs> okay, so I graduated in 1986. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, so, so but it was was the rules the same then? Like, they had to accept you they in the wrestling had to have let me. They had to have let me. Okay, okay. But something in my heart said that's not fair to do that to these boys. Really? Yeah. Like, like just, what, something uh, in you said. Something in my jack, heart. I'm gonna jack these kids up. If they don't know, they don't know the 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 person that they're dealing with. They don't know what I've been through. They don't know. And they, they I just, they just thought don't that until you said that right now. Yeah. It never occurred to me. But they just no. don't understand. They don't understand. Like, look, man, there's, there's somebody there. Like I can tell like when tonight we, we had uh we have every Thursday night is live wrestling in my club. Right. And huh? there are certain kids that hit me. Uh, let me rephrase that. We, we did something on Monday shooter. Uh, Monday. So Scotty started. We started to. Yeah, we started to write our goals down on the walls. You know, uh -huh. so something very, very permanent. Meaning, it's right. it's just drywall. You know, but it's just written in magic marker on the walls. So it's not right. like it's something that's oh, it's on a whiteboard. It can be erased. It's it's not something that's on a chalkboard and can be erased. It's not something that's just whatever. It's it's 
Okay, let me stop you. Go. That is phenomenal, phenomenal as a coach to do that. You know why? It wasn't my what idea. That is. <laughs> okay, whoever did it, <laughs> you should have taken the credit. I what won't though. I can't do it, dude. I can't do it. But it, look, it was not my idea. It was it was one of my assist. Uh, I shouldn't even call him my assistant. He's he's a, a friend of mine that that coaches at the club with me, and it was his idea. And okay, well, that's really cool. phenomenal. It doesn't matter. You're associating with him. You want him in your life. Sure. And so the bottom line is that you guys did this. Can and I you guys you, have this. Can I what? tell you how many of these kids wrote Take Mike Down or Beat Mike <laughs> on this dance? <laughs> these sons of guns. Do you really? All right. So my point <laughs> is that I can tell. I can tell. And this is getting back to something a little bit more serious. <sighs> I can tell the kids that hit me because I tell them to hit me. And I can tell the kids that hit me with a purpose. And when the kids that hit me with some meaning behind that, those are the kids that I'm not scared of them, but I can, I respect the type of, I don't know if it's anger. I don't know if it's, I don't know, shooter. I don't know. It, yeah, balls or whatever. I mean, you, I mean, for guys, you call it balls. I don't know what you'd call it for you, but, um, you know, it, it, you, you, it's a different, I can feel it. I can feel it. And I can understand a young lady going, these, these motherfuckers have no idea. <laughs> they just don't. They don't have an idea. So, or, you know, a young lady that's been through what you have. Um, so I can get, I get that, man. And, and um, it wasn't right for me to do that to a boy. I could have wrestled. I wanted to wrestle, but not What that made way. you want to wrestle, though? I mean, like, like look, right? So, because like, you're hatch. starting, <clears throat> excuse me, you're starting to get interest from, from boys and, and and you know you're you're getting the right kind of uh, of attention as opposed to the the negative attention that you were getting right. at home. Um, right. So so what makes you go in a different direction and say, I don't want to be um, the the dainty uh, cheerleader. The dainty I didn't want to be the dainty cheerleader, but I wanted I didn't. Well. I, now, this is hard to describe. Um, I hold and I've always held, even though through everything that's happened to me, rape, uh, violations, sexual violence, I mean, I could go on and on. But I hold my femininity and my womanhood as... Um, it is something that's very precious to me, and I don't. I've never once wanted to be a man. I've ne I, That's holy to me, and I never Your wanted. Your femininity is. Yeah, my femininity. My. I mean, there's a reason. There's a difference between a man and a woman. Sure. Okay, men are meant to be the way they are, and I and I love men. And women are the way they are, and I, I love women, not in that way, you know, I'm strictly, and, and I get asked all the time, and this is one of my whole crusades, is, is I, I don't like the way women are portrayed right now as wrestlers. I don't like, and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate mail when I really get going and that's not what I'm trying to do. I I understand when girls uh, have to wrestle with boys. I don't think I mean here was that was one of my only options. I could have wrestled in high school with boys. Uh, it wasn't right. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but that's my view, and I hope no, you don't get no, 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 no. And here's okay, and here's you're gonna get me off on a tangent now too because I completely agree with you. 
Now, here's why. Um, do we train girls up until they're in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade? Not by my choice. Okay, look. First and foremost, everyone that's watching this or listening to this has to understand, first and foremost, I love the sport of wrestling. Secondly, I love to train wrestlers. Thirdly, I'm a business owner. Okay? Now, that being said, females are, oh, I don't know, 50% of the population of this mm, this rock that we're spinning on. Okay? So I understand the value in training female wrestlers. Now, that said, New Jersey has the rule that the women, as far as uh, school-sanctioned events, have to compete with the boys. Now, that is absolutely ludicrous to me. Now, here's – but see, here's the thing. Nobody really cares enough to try and change it. That's really the problem. The problem is that it is a very, very simple fix. All we have to do is every single dual meet that we have, okay, every every high school wrestling coach, and I'm not just talking to you right now, Christy. I'm talking to high school coaches and, and rec coaches right now too, okay? All we have to do is your team is required to have three, count them, three girls on your team, Okay? And all you have to do is have a lightweight, a middleweight, and a heavyweight. Okay? Huh? Okay. There's, dude, for sure, you could fill three weight classes. Okay? Now, that said, all we have to do is stick that dual meet in the beginning and or the end of every single dual meet. And now these girls don't have to worry about being fondled by other dudes. Yeah, okay, dude, let, me, let me stop you right here. And this is why I want to be the speaker, is because you come off being the bad guy. I'm Christy Schultz. My family has given the ultimate sacrifice for wrestling. I wrestled, and I want to take on this responsibility because you're a man, and people can say things to you. Oh, you're a man. You don't know what it's like. Fair I'm going to say that, let's be honest, people, America, world, if we don't knock off the sensitivity and – be honest. We are going to lose wrestling, period. We're going to lose it if we don't face the fact that women's wrestling has got to become a sport that appeals to women. We're being told by the IOC, if you don't change the rules and and. We demand women that they're half the population. If women aren't interested in wrestling, we're dropping it. We live, we have to face facts. We live, and, and it's a great fact. We are in a, an age of gender equality. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. So, it is, it's much yeah. more, the, I mean, gender equality is much more prevalent now than it was ever in history. Agreed? Absolutely. And it throughout civilization and throughout history, wars are fought over it. Right now we're fighting a war. I've got a friend over on the front lines in Afghanistan who tells me every day how painful it is as a soldier to go and cure these girls that are getting acid thrown on their faces because they go to school. Every culture it has a slower growth or a faster growth. But this is what wars are coming from, and that is gender equality. Now, we've come decades. Uh, oh, millennia. No, for else. sure. For right. sure. We have, yeah. Right. And so I appreciate that. And on the one hand, I, I, I appreciate all the men coaches that are, they've, their hearts are in the right place. They are really trying. You look at Rich Bender, who's coming out saying, look, we've got to change the rules. USA Wrestling has been awesome. They are trying to do what they can to to, to change. However, they they don't but, exactly. Uh, you know what, dude? Don't get me started on that because if we if if things were dealt with the way they should have been dealt with about ten or fifteen years ago, we wouldn't have had to change in the first place. Okay, so you know, well, look, uh, Bender's uh, he's doing a good job. I look, 
he's he's playing the cards that he was dealt. Okay. Right. But the truth of the matter is, and I don't want to sound like some douchey insider. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah, I, like I I know I don't I know Rich Mr. Bender. You know, I've called him Mr. Bender. I've never called him Rich for my life. So, I mean, I've known him from a from a handshake, okay? Uh-huh. But the truth of the matter is he was dealt a pretty shitty hand, okay? And and right well, now this right. whole issue is hard. Yeah. This is not an easy issue. Yeah. Because you know, here we've got these inspirational uh, podcasts or or whatever you have of these NCAA champions and there's passion and there's oh we've got to keep wrestling. Well, why aren't there any women? We don't have NCAA women champions. It's going to take a little time. But to, it's to going to practice. take some time. But 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 here's the problem though. I mean, everything that we have as wrestling was cultivated. At a grassroots level, it was cultivated at a uh, youth level, right? So what happens is at a youth level, when girls are gir- little girls are are on par and and physically more mature than little boys, they do well and they have success, right? And then what happens is, um, you know, they 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 they, they their body changes. And then men's body changes, and then all of a sudden they're expected to have the same success that they did at that youth level, and that's just not realistic at all. It's yeah, unfair. It's not realistic for the girls either, and it's not fair that's to what the boys. I mean. Not fair to the five years old. It's not fair to the boys. I agree. I agree. However, when the the sexes are more ambiguous, okay, it is much easier. For a, for a little girl to fall in love with the sport because she's exactly. so and I agree with that. I, no. I agree with that. And so, right now, it's kind of got to be that way. I understand but that. But it doesn't really have to be that way. It really doesn't. Oh, look, that's again, a, that's I, you know, right. I, I'm, I'm sitting here going, you know, look, I am a business owner too, okay? I want girls, little girls, I want little girls in this club to have their own class time. I want exactly. I want enough I want enough little girls. I want six little girls. That's all I want. Six little girls that will warrant me uh you know to pay a young lady to coach them full time. That's okay, what I want. Very much and that is the exact attitude that that is needed by all the other coaches because that is the only way Girls are going to be interested in wrestling, and I, I do all my own polls and so forth. I've got daughters. I've got a son. My daughters, they, it's 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 scary to them because they don't want to get beat up. They don't want to be with the boys. It's just like boys. They don't want a girl in there. No. And uh, and I want to tell you a story because this is really important. And this is how. Uh, this is something that just got thrown in my face, and, and I'll try to make it a short story. I went out. I was on Team Foxcatcher, and I was training for national championships, early 90s. And I went out to train with Dave on the farm, stayed with Dave and Nancy. Now, Foxcatcher had a, uh, a youth program. It was, all, it was all boys, and it coached by uh, Del Bonsell. And it was, they were really... By the way, can we, can Mr. Bonzel was one of the first national champions for Middlesex County College. Is that right? Yeah, anyway, so. he, I love that guy. He was a great guy. Right, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Right. Do you want a skirt to go dance on? Or oh, like, come on, and, dude. <laughs> you, oh, that's foul. <laughs> okay. But, okay, here goes the reality that hit me. I met here. You've got a person that already from ninth grade didn't knew that it wasn't fair to these boys to join the the wrestling team. So I backed off, and I just you know I could have done it, but I didn't feel like it was right, and it had nothing to do with any. I just had this in my heart, this feeling like you know I just don't feel feel like it's fair to these boys because no matter what I do, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna look like a hero. They're gonna have new, you know, I'll get and these poor guys. Compassion. 
for a young kid too, by the way. Can we, can we be honest? I mean, <laughs> most kids, but at me included for sure would have been like, fuck those kids. I'm going to put them on their heads. You know what I mean? Like me, I, for real though. Like, you know what I mean? I don't like, know why I never had that. I don't know. I just, because I was a kid. I get, I wanted, to, you know. Well, so was I, but I wanted to win. <laughs> like, I wanted to beat everyone. I so did to... I. I did so too. Ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. But so, it wasn't worth it. It no, wasn't worth it to right. the, the, I knew that. The, but understand was, that that's a lot of foresight for a young lady to have. Well, um, thanks. I guess. <laughs> thanks, I guess. Um, but, okay, so. I'm I'm at fog catcher, and because of the lack of food I had all those years, and because of my desire for this this crave for education, I got so into learning and, and anatomy and physiology. I wanted to to be a doctor. However, I didn't have, as you can see, I don't have the. You've got to have this amazing short term memory, and I go into anatomy and physiology, and I still remember. This is, I remember all the bone markings. I can tell you all the bone markings in every part of your body. However, the short term memory to cram for a test and tell you every little piece and like that I didn't have. Nothing okay. for nothing, but we can talk about that too because I mean, the, the education system is probably failing us there too. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, most people are probably closer to your. Uh, retention rate as far as short term memory goes than they are closer to doctors but that's a story for yeah, I just completely forgot what, what did you say <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> so my so go ahead okay, I'm sorry so we, we, can, we can definitely have that conversation at a different time but go ahead okay, uh, so, okay. so you so wanted to be a doctor Bonzel's, uh, Bonzel's room mm -hmm. so I get into the wrestling room I'm I'm there mainly training. Uh, Dave was just an amazing man, and he was training me. He'd tell me where to run, how to run. He'd go running with me beyond his own training for nationals. He was training for national open. I was training for nationals. But this man, here I am, this lowly, I don't want to say lowly woman, but I'm just, I'm learning how to wrestle. And he's treating me like I'm a star, and that's the way he treated everyone. And he, I just have, I love that man with, with all my heart. And um, so he says, look, Chrissy, I want you to go in and, and train with, with this group. And I did whatever Dave told me to do because, I mean. Because he was fucking Dave it, Schultz. <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't just that. It was like, um, he, you, you could tell he really cared about me learning how to wrestle and really learning. And so I went in that room. And here's a group of about 50 boys, and they're really talented wrestlers. And um, I remember Adele talking to me, and he says, Now, I've never coached a, a woman before, and you're, you're very beautiful. And um, what, how do you want to work this? And I said, I will not wrestle a, uh, any male slow. It's got to be live and fast. I will not drill with a, with, with a boy. You're going too slow. I will not teach. To this day, I would never teach a boy slow moves, drilling, nothing. It's got to be 70% to 100% full speed because then you're out. And even then, um, now I don't have to work out with men. So it's different. But even then, here I was learning how to wrestle. I said, I'm not going to drill with any of them. I'm not going to – and if any of these guys don't want to wrestle me, don't make any of them wrestle me. Do not force a boy to wrestle me because they, they don't – I feel bad that I'm here. I feel bad that I'm making – I'm changing the room. My presence right now is changing this room. You get a group of women in, in one room that are wrestling. You put a man in there, you change the room. For sure. I'm not going to do that to these boys if I can help it. I didn't want to be there. However, I, I just was going to go to a couple practices. I'm going to learn what I can out of this. So I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. And he thought, well, I thought you treat all girls the same. And I said, you know what? Or, or it's the same as men and the same as boys. And I said, you know what? I'm not a man. I'm not a boy. 
I physiologically, biologically, and socially cannot do what any of these boys are doing. I don't care if I'm stronger or because I don't have the endurance. I don't have the, let alone the skill, whatever. Sure, I can well, I mean, take... I, when you say the word skill, a skill becomes a very tricky word, too. I mean, these it kids... Does. These kids grew up. I mean, you're talking about bumfuck PA, okay? And you're talking about the early 90s, okay? You're right. talking about wrestling mecca. These kids literally grew up right. on a wrestling mat, okay? So right. the word skill becomes really tricky. And the word strength becomes kind of interesting, too, because your strength might be a little bit different than a young boy's strength. Okay, so, and then, and now you're talking about... I gotta say that I could bench 225 twice when I was at 115 pounds, and that's a big, big mark behind me, so I can prove it. But no, no, I was, no, but what I mean is, it's just, it's a different type of exactly. strength. Women hold their weight differently exactly. than they do, than, than uh, men yeah, right. I mean that's 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 science. I heard that. I heard I heard that somewhere. <laughs> but no, really though. I mean it, it, it is though. It, it, it's 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 a little right. different. So you're you're talking about apples and oranges. So right. you're it's, especially at one of the more elite levels of the sport. Right. These people go. These people go. Oh well, this girl's stronger than that boy or maybe she is but it doesn't it's just a different type of strength they're they're they carry their weight differently so you know for you to to even recognize that dude you had some you had some foresight I and mean, how old were you at the time in the early 90s you were probably what 20 21 1920 yeah. <laughs> what 19 or 20 yeah yeah okay so for for a young lady then to to understand that and to understand that the what it does to a kid but see i had to it, that, i'm sorry that hold, was, on, hold it, on gucci wants to interject i know what it, no, i did because you want some of this <laughs> 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 I, I like that yeah, that's all right easy. there you go look at those pythons easy easy <laughs> the guns you well, want a piece of this i was gonna ask um well i was gonna ask you if you ever had a female on your team because we, we wrestled the same high school. In my senior year, uh, we had a female on the team. Uh -huh. it, it's interesting to see the, uh, to hear the difference because yeah. she, um, I think like no matter what, she wanted to be on that team. She just wanted to be part she of the didn't, team. She didn't care. But to, to you know, for me, I remember because I knew her for a long time growing up. And mm -hmm. um, she was very thankful when I would wrestle with her. So I used to roll with her because to me, it didn't matter. You know what I mean? If she wanted to wrestle, she had nowhere else to go. Okay, yeah, so. you, you made that choice, though. Right, right, right. Yeah, because there were people very uncomfortable absolutely. with it. There were very people, there was people very uncomfortable with it. And it, it annoyed me because I'm like, to me, like you were saying, there's not a lot of outlets um, in the beginning. Keep those coming, though. Yeah. Right? Keep those, so, anything you got. I, I, to me, I was like, I'll roll with her. You know what I mean? And then she used to thank me. You know, well, yeah. and I remember right. that to this, you know, to right. this day. Wait, I, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm not going to cut Gucci off here, mm -hmm. but I got a story that I got to tell. About. Wait, I want, and I, I didn't get to finish go mine. Go ahead. Go, just go, 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 okay. Then you can tell yours, okay? Because yeah. this is really important. No, yeah. So, no, really, uh, that's all I, I wanted, Dad, because it's, it's, it's interesting hearing how you had the foresight, like he was saying. How okay, but how didn't you, did, did, okay, be honest now. Mm -hmm. As the team, as a team member, you embraced, I'm sure that at some point you guys had to embrace her, and you all said, you probably now say, oh, it's cool having her on. And if I wasn't here right now and we're not talking about this and some somebody asked you and you're trying to promote wrestling, you would have said, oh, yeah, it was cool. You know, we, we really liked her. We supported her. Okay, how do you really feel? I mean, is, that, is that the truth? Like, how do you really feel? Well, yeah. I mean, am I right? I feel like it's half school? supported, half not. You know what I mean? Like there were okay, some people that felt, felt very weird. If a coach came to you and people are saying, well, how did you feel about having this girl on a team? Now, don't okay, erase this conversation that we just right. had. Would you be like, like me, me personally? Yeah, wouldn't you? Like, no. I, 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 I did not, have, I did not like, like you, how you said you had the, the foresight. To me, I was like, you know what? She had nowhere else to go, so why deny her? That was my 
I was a senior in high school, so I was 17, 18. Okay. So how did the rest of the team really feel, even though half you're all awkward. Eight they felt awkward. What? They felt awkward. Like half of them felt awkward to wrestle her. Thank you. you know that's, what that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. There were some of us that didn't care, like me, which I really didn't. I did not feel awkward. I would roll with her. And but you knew her. Right, right, right. But like, you know, it, just, it was anybody, you know what I mean? But, but right. what you're saying is that half of this team were like, they felt weird. They didn't know how to react to it. Okay, and, and, and that's the reality that we're still not... Yeah, facing. nobody's really nobody's really focused nobody's on Nobody's talking about it. Yeah. Because nobody's... they can't. It's not politically correct, and we're trying to support, and guys are doing what they can, and, and I'm appreciative of that fact. But girls have got to understand, and they're not going to understand if the truth isn't there. And, and the men, coaches, they're to bless them. Everybody, as wrestlers, we're trying to come together. We're trying to do what we can. But the honesty factor is eluding everybody because they're trying to be politically correct. Now, if a girl has, a girl just doesn't belong on a boy's team. I don't care how old she It's like you said, it's so simple to fix. It's and really not hard, yeah. It's it isn't. Hard. But let me finish my story and I'll tell you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's and this is, was like a huge turn. Now here you're talking about I had foresight. Mm -hmm. That didn't even occur to me until you just said said it today. But um, I'm in this wrestling room, and there's 50 guys in there, and I knew that they were all tough. And they, I, I'm trying to help the coach help me, and I'm like, don't treat me like one of the guys because I'm not a guy, but. I'm going to tell you, it's uncomfortable for me, it's uncomfortable for him. Uh, not, It wasn't uncomfortable for me, but I'm sure it's uncomfortable for them if we go slow. I'm sure it's going to be uncomfortable. Don't force anybody to, to wrestle with me. And he was really surprised. However, we start warming up and stuff, and, and I can just feel something's going on in the room, and, and, and it wasn't a good feeling. I just, something was wrong. And... The whole atmosphere of this room just changed, and there was it because went from Joel. You really, I mean, you really feel it's because of your oh, presence. I felt this, just this seething. It, it was a jovial room. They were all laughing. Their their warm up was kicking the ball like the Schultz, Schultz brothers used to do that all the time, and they'd be warming up. There was this brotherhood, if you will, mm -hmm. in the room. I walk in at first, oh, she's cute. I, see, I hear these comments and stuff. These are high school boys. I'm in college, whatever. I, I know I'm attractive. I try not to. I didn't have any makeup on. I put it, you know, I try not to make that an issue. Um, I walk over. Hey, by the way, we got to ask, is that a, is that an issue? Like, I mean, is, is a girl, like, I mean, all right. So like you go to like, because. Look, there are women wrestlers, right? Now, especially, like, there are young ladies that are good looking, well, too. I mean, like, Clarissa Chun is, she's darn cute, man. Like, she's a good looking young lady. And, like, I mean, is that something that, that comes across your mind? Is that, like, when you're going to wrestle, um, near the boys? Is that like as a, I mean, I, Clarissa's, a, you know, she's a little bit older now, so I can't imagine that she'd, give a shit what a high school boy thinks of her but something like is that something that goes through your head like oh my god i gotta put some makeup on or like is it is it something well, like, i want to present myself as a woman and if i know that there are i mean we're right on this this border right now where um where I want to, and, and um, for example, Shannon Williams, Yancey now, we always roomed together, and we always did each other's makeup before we went on, and, and we always on, made sure we looked, uh, went on to, to wrestle with other girls. Okay. We okay. wanted to present ourselves as beautiful, strong, feminine women. We didn't want to go around spitting like these other girls okay. and, and, you know, shaving their heads. I've seen videos of me and their responses and excuse me, but the D word is very common. Oh, that wrestler looks like a D I K E because this, you know, and she's walking around like a dyke. Yeah, I got it. I'm like this, and 
I don't want to present that. And I, it's a bad image for women's wrestling. And it would piss me off and it would piss Shannon off. We're not here to be men. We're here to, to, to show that women can be strong and athletic and have a skill and be beautiful. If you notice, Shannon has a really beautiful figure. She's a beautiful girl. I always, and of course I have a different background, but there is no way this body would get into spandex if there was fat hanging out. I, I cared about that kind of stuff. And when you're, if you're dieting and cutting weight, like weight are, which is a huge issue with me, women should never, they're going to, they shouldn't be cutting weight, neither should boys, but to the extent that they do. But men can't afford to take off 10 pounds of water right before and be totally fine. A girl does that. She is straining her kidneys, her liver, her female organ. I mean, she is hurting herself. And she does it over and over and over again. And that girl's in trouble. And maybe and and so that's a whole other issue though. But this is why I'm saying girls have got to learn how to eat right. Men can handle and afford to get away with certain things for a certain amount of time. You, you want to see the performance levels of women get better? You change their diet. You treat them like a woman. She's going to get amazing because she's not going to be cutting weight like these guys and picking out on donuts and crap right before the weigh-in. That performance level is going to right shift after. to where it should be. Her body is going to look exactly like it should be if she's treated like a woman. However, look at where we are. By, by 2020, no matter what we do right now, I don't know how old your kids are, 65% of all Americans are going to be morbidly obese by the time they're 18 years old. That, that doesn't a done surprise deal. me, though. No, that doesn't surprise me at all. No. But you add to what I'm saying is we know nothing about nutrition. Nobody knows anything. Oh yeah, I think we do. No, I think we do. That I think they're just ignorant. No, I think I think that there's just well, people. You're saying here. what's true, but 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 my whole issue is that we can't keep treating women like they're men as elite athletes because women will never be able to perform well. You can't, I, I saw this article where this girl was so proud, and I, and I won't even say, I'm not going to say who it is, I don't want a bunch of enemies, but she was proud of herself because she had cut 13 pounds and made weight like the, that day, and there's a picture of her pigging out on donuts yeah. prior, right before she went on, and yeah, underneath yeah. it said, oh, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's Look, okay. Uh, all right. Hold on, though. Hold on. Hold on. Because here's here's the real truth of the matter. Okay, that is not a that is not a women's and men's issue. That is a cultural. Yes, no, it's not because it's it's a well, cultural issue that we see men pigging out on donuts and stuff, and that they is can no, afford to do that. No, they can't. They can't well, because. Oh, you're right. You're right, but it's just worse for women, though. Well, it and is. You uh, want to uh, see you, biologically? Biologically, it might be a little bit, a little bit worse for women. Okay, simply because of the, the 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 way that the chemistry of a woman's body works. But the truth of the matter is that we have to start treating a lot of these processed sugars as a toxin, the way that. We should have twenty five years ago. Okay, and, that's true, but you're hitting a whole other issue. Yeah, I am. I am. But my, my point a, is that this is a bigger issue than just oh, women versus men. You know, you're I mean, absolutely so, right. I agree with you. You know, absolutely. So, so you know, my my argument would be: look, let's all stop eating friggin'. Well, bananas. yeah, but you can't have the. You can't change the world right now, Mike. I can though. I mean, we're, <laughs> I'm trying, damn it. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, look, look, the truth of the matter is these some of these kids don't know what to eat after weigh-ins. They really don't. Like, I mean, so, and when I say kids, what I mean is, you know, tw 10, 12, 13 years old, they have no idea that they absolutely, lutely should be eating vegetables and protein after weigh-ins. Right. Well, that's what my job used to be is 
the coaches would call me in and I'd have these clinics and help these kids know what to eat. But now my whole business, the business word, I mean, my whole focus, that's a better word, is now on helping wrestling and helping girls. I just would hate it would be devastating to lose wrestling. And All right. We're not going to lose wrestling. You, know, girls, you but, know what? I, I got to be honest with you. We're not going to lose wrestling. I want I want to hear more about your business. What would you say? I wanted to hear more about your business. Tell me what you do now. Well, um, now I'm conforming to try to um, to to help help women, promote women's wrestling. And you know, I'm I'm trying. I mean, we're, we're being told, demanding that, that it appeal to women. And so I'm trying to be able to switch from one aspect to, okay, this has got to be targeted more toward women so that, my, I mean, my daughters don't want to wrestle because they're, they think they're going to get huge muscles and, and they're afraid to get hurt. And, you know, there's all these, these issues. And if we feminize the sport... Or girls wrestling, make it women's wrestling. I want it basically my pro. I want to build a program that that people can see what it is that that I'm trying to. Uh, this is hard for me to put into words. Um, okay, let me let me let me try to help you. Okay, there's um, two young ladies. That I have in my head that, um, I don't name any names because no, I don't. I hate. won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. But there were two young ladies that used to train with me and now do not because they, for lack of a better term, had better partners other places. Okay. Yeah. So meaning they they there was a uh, there was a youth. Uh, women's oh, team. Yeah. What's that? Male, male no, no, no. Females. Two females. Oh. Um, two young ladies that. that no. The other workout partners were, were they... females. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, of course. Yes, okay. yes. Because they didn't have to wrestle with boys. Exactly. They went somewhere else. Okay? Right. And and I really and when their parents said that to me, I'm like, yeah, you kind of got. A good point there. I really can't argue with that point at all. You know, how right. am I going to, how am I going to argue with that? So, right. uh, you know, that's my job right there. Right. So I want to help you, the person that cares to ha as a businessman. Yeah. Yeah. If you want these girls to wrestle at your club, I want to make it so that you have 10 girls that are there. Yeah. That's the program that I want to build so that everybody can take from that. Okay, I'm a man. I'm trying to promote it. This, hey, Christy's got this program. I want to know what it is, and I'm going to get, I want these girls to show up in your gym. That's going to be the progression of women's wrestling. Thus, therefore, thereby, you've got women's wrestling, you've got men's wrestling, and gradually you're not going to have the whole um, argument of, should or should not girls wrestle boys, which doesn't, it's not going to, no parent wants their child. No, dude. Blah, 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 blah. However, I, I want you to have 10 girls. I do. I do. do you, that's do what you I want to do. And I need help promoting it. And that's why I told you I needed some help there, getting back into who's the right people to get a good website going, to How show, you know, all that kind of stuff. to the right people right now. How do we promote your? Give me a second. Yeah. How do we? How do we get a hold of you? Um, well, that's my problem. Is right now, this is my first cell phone, but by Mark Schultz Jr. And I've only had it for about six weeks, and I. So you can Facebook friend me, um, and. 
apparently I'm, you know, I'm quite screwed up people. And so phones are one of my, I'm like afraid of phones. However, now I'm getting used to it. All right. Listen, Chrissy, and, Chrissy, oh. I'm going to help you here for a second. Okay. I'm going to help you here for a second. Phones are not that big of a novelty to most of America right now. However, however, <laughs> however, 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 um, if you would like to get a hold of Christy. No, I, on a computer, I'm on Facebook. You can just get on Facebook. But you don't have Facebook. to say your name, sweetheart. You have to say your name. Christy Schultz. S-C-H-U-L-T-Z. <laughs> Christy all right. Schultz. All right, so there you go. All right, so you can get. I thought you were gonna help me. I'm trying, <laughs> lady. I'm trying. Okay. So okay. all right, so look, you're gonna get a hold of her on Facebook at Christy Schultz. Um, do you have a Twitter account? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna bank on saying no. I'm just saying. I'm asking, lady. I'm on. All right. She's been out. I've been out for what? Twelve years. My kids were ten right. when they had a. Can we? Can we talk? <laughs> All right. Look, I have to cut this short because my old lady is is blowing my phone up here. Um, but you better answer that, dude. I, I heard the fear. I the am. fear. She put, I am. You know what? But she, but 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 but. but. It. Remember the watermelon. What? Oh yeah. That's watermelon. Right. Come yeah, on. There's the watermelon thing. Um. <laughs> But, um, oh, sugar. Oh, we're, can we please do this again? Absolutely. Anytime. Because we, really... we only started off with the kind of the negative things. I mean, you did place at the World Championships in 91. I mean, there are, there are some, some. There's awesome some, a lot of victory. There's a lot of positives to my story. There's more positives than. I don't see any of it as negative. There really isn't any negative. Um, it might be hard to hear. Porch was bad. I'm not going to no, lie. No, it was an experience. I didn't ask for it. I didn't deserve it, but it happened, and I'm grateful for it because if I don't embrace it, look, for what I am. It was, I am a glass half full kind of guy. Sleeping on the porch in Massachusetts in the wintertime ain't no good. No, okay. hey, I got to sleep in the woodshed. Excuse you. You're, yeah, you make a fair point. There. Woodshed. You make a okay. fair point. Okay. <laughs> you make a fair point. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, we're we're going to cut this right now um, unless you, of course, want to pay for my divorce. Um <laughs> So, Trust me, people, you do not ever want to go through oh, divorce, man. especially if you have kids. That's so you right. better keep that marriage. I will. She's you better keep her happy. All the men out there, keep your wives happy. It's not that hard. It ain't that hard. It it's really hard. is not that hard. Come Guys here. are pansies <laughs> and babies. I swear, a bunch of pansies. I know. It's easy. Uh -huh. yeah. We don't. All right. I'm telling you, guys are weenies. <laughs> We're trying. We're trying. We're trying to be weenies, I know. Well, all right. All right. Good night. All right. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you real soon on Facebook.